their lives would change forever. Because the entire world was about to black out. For two minutes and seven. This doesn't hurt. This feels like happiness. <laughs> yeah. Grey's Anatomy's Patrick Dempsey, later tonight on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Baby's coming now. <laughs> All new ABC next Thursday. The baby? Well, he'd be okay. This doctor has spent her career saving young lives. He weighs less than two pounds. He's suffering. This is the case that will test everything she believes in. What's our alternative? Ending his life? And while one mother fights to save her child. Will you please help us? Another is faced with her own crisis. Our daughter. She's getting married tomorrow and you're not going to be there. Mom, I need you. ABC's Private Practice. All new next Thursday at 10, 9 central on ABC. Former President Bill Clinton in the hospital tonight will update his condition. First they cut the phone lines disabling the alarm and then they robbed the people blind. I'm Bob Wilson straight ahead and they're up to about five towns so far. And a crash stemming from a police pursuit leaves a path of destruction on the shoreline. Breaking news out of Winstead where there are reports of a major police investigation. There is a scene at 14 Shore Drive at a home. Major crimes is on the scene, we're being told. Although we don't have the specifics, we have a news crew headed there. We'll bring you the latest when we get it. Other news tonight, a police pursuit comes to a violent conclusion. It began in East Haven and ended in New Haven. Several people are injured. News Channel A's Jamie Murrell has the details. It started out as a routine traffic stop, but then the woman in the car didn't really want to stop. She took off, leading to a chase all the way into New Haven, but it didn't stop there. It's a scene of cars and confusion. Emergency personnel cover the corner of New Haven's Grand and Blatchley, tending to a number of injured people. Some who were at one time driving on four wheels are now being pushed on four wheels into a waiting ambulance on a stretcher. Please tell us this whole event begins in East Haven. Uh, East Haven had a car stopped in their town, and the uh, driver took off, struck an East Haven police officer. They began a pursuit. Police would pursue 34-year-old Kelly Card into New Haven, finally ending at the busy intersection. The flight from police would injure four people with neck and back injuries. The chase went around several streets in Fairhaven and ended up here. The driver struck uh, first this car. Then uh, the next two cars, uh, when the car stopped, she jumped out on foot, tried to run away, and we uh, caught her at that time. She's two other notes here. We were told that at one point the woman threw narcotics out of her vehicle. Also, we were told that an East Haven officer was dragged at the start of this incident. No word yet on any charges. Reporting from New Haven, I'm Jamie Muro, News Channel 8. Former President Bill Clinton is in a New York City hospital tonight following a heart-related procedure. A doctor says tonight that his prognosis is excellent. Mr. Clinton, who underwent heart surgery in 2004, went to the hospital with chest pains today. ABC's Lindsay Davis is in Manhattan. Good evening. Mr. Clinton's cardiologist says that the former president's life was never threatened, that he did not suffer a heart attack nor any damage to his heart. In fact, he says that the former president is up and walking around. The 63-year-old former president complained of chest pains before his trip to the hospital. He did not have a heart attack or any damage to his heart. One of the bypass grafts was completely blocked. The fact that he was having repetitive symptoms at rest, he was treated with two stents that were placed into the, his own coronary artery. Stents are commonly used to keep an artery open after it's unclogged in an angioplasty procedure. This is a stent. Um, it's a small wire mesh tube, and it's inserted into the arteries around the heart to open them up. It goes in on a catheter through an artery, and it, it opens up a blockage. Mr. Clinton is said to be in good spirits and spoke with President Obama, who called to wish him a speedy recovery. Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton arrived at the hospital from Washington to be with her husband. The secretary was scheduled to leave on Friday on a trip to the Persian Gulf. She's now planning to leave Saturday. 
In 2004, President Clinton underwent quadruple heart bypass surgery. Since leaving the White House, he's traveled the world, raising money for various causes. Just a few days ago, he was in Haiti, where he serves as UN Special Ambassador and has taken a leading role in raising money for earthquake victims. The president of the American Heart Association described the procedure as not unexpected, saying that it's pretty common for blockages to return five to ten years after a bypass. Former President Clinton's cardiologist said he'll be fine to return to work as early as Monday. Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. Now, each and every year, thousands of Americans undergo the same stint procedure that former President Bill Clinton had today. The procedure is used to open up a clogged artery leading to the heart. Cardiologist Dr. Michael Logue of Bridgeport Hospital tells us it is not uncommon for someone like former President Clinton, who had bypass surgery in 2004, to require a stent. What we do is what's called an angiogram, or a cardiac catheterization, where a, a small flexible tube goes in from the artery of the leg up through the aorta to the heart, and then with a small metal wire, we, we cross that blockage, and then with a very small balloon, open up that blockage. And then after that, put in a small metal tube called a stent, which keeps that blockage open for years to come. Now, over the next few days, doctors will watch the former president very closely for signs of bleeding in the spot in the leg where doctors inserted a catheter. It was the advice of a doctor that kept UConn basketball co coach Jim Calhoun off the bench for several games. Well, tonight he is back, and not a moment too soon for the struggling UConn Huskies. Sports teammates, no offense, live in under Haven Newsroom with more on Jim Calhoun's return. Noah? Yeah, it had been three weeks that he's been out of action. It was three weeks ago that he said doctors told him it was time he took it easy for a little while, and he said he was going to listen to him this time, and he did. He missed seven games total in that time. The Huskies won three games, lost four. Exactly why he needed that time, what his ailment is, well, nobody knows except for... Coach Calhoun, his doctor, and the few people he chose to tell, because we certainly don't know. But he says he's feeling good now. The time off was good for him. So he was at his office at 9 a.m. this morning, conducted practice at 3, and is expected to be with the team through the remainder of the season. Speaking of the remainder of the season, the Huskies need some wins, so they're glad their head coach is back. And we'll see him in game action this Saturday when the Huskies host the University of Cincinnati, a game you can see on our sister station, My TV 9. We'll have more coming up on this story in sports. Till then, we'll send it back to you. All right, Noah, great to see him back. Well, break-ins by the dozens have homeowners in several towns looking over their shoulders. Police say thieves are hitting homes in Plainville, Sellington, Avon, Farmington, and Berlin. News Channel 8's Bob Wilson spoke exclusively to one of those homeowners. When you came home, what were you thinking? Um, what the hell happened to my house? Robert and Stephanie live in a quiet neighborhood in Farmington. Their house was ransacked, everything torn apart, and it all happened in broad daylight. It was just a mess. They really went for everything. Took the ice cream out of the freezer and kind of really helped themselves. Yeah, so. they even ate our chocolate. We were out of chocolate. They ate, they ate your food? Yeah, we were out of chocolate and ice cream. They say the burglar found every hiding place and took jewelry, cash, and electronics worth thousands of dollars. Police say they have struck repeatedly in Farmington and surrounding towns like Avon, Plainville, Berlin, and Southington. Police say it's the same every time. The burglar is deliberate and thoroughly searches the house. They definitely had some time to definitely settle in almost in a way to kind of go through everything, see what they really wanted, and pick out all, all the valuables. Now, one common thread between all the burglaries is this right here. I want to show you this. This is the phone line. This is where it was cut right here and been repaired on this house. But police say by cutting that, you can possibly disable the alarm. Now, both the police and the residents who live here say they believe the burglars were professionals. Kind of freaky. Yeah, it is. I guess they, they knew what they were doing. You know, you could say professionals. The burglar even had a way of dealing with a 100-pound puppy that had been placed in a crate for the afternoon. If we gave him a chance, he would have probably just chased him away. Wow. Well, so do, do they feed him treats or something? Yeah, they try to, but there's still treats in the crate. Farmington detectives have been working the case around the clock and do have several good leads. We have made uh, some significant progress. Um, I'm not at liberty to tell you um, who we think the suspect is, but we think we have narrowed it down to a suspect. There is a meeting Tuesday night at the Farmington Public Library where police will discuss the case with residents. In Farmington, Bob Wilson, News Channel 8. In North Haven, police are searching for robbery suspects after a crime at an apartment complex. Police say a man inside an apartment was startled by two men climbing through a ground-level window. 
Cops say one suspect then took off, but a brief scuffle ensued between the man in the apartment and the other suspect before he too took off. Now, nobody was hurt, but police say a small amount of money was taken. So far, no arrests have been made. One woman has died, another is seriously injured following a two car crash in Haddam. It was a story News Channel 8 was first to report. It happened on Route 81 near Hubbard Road. Police say one of the cars crossed into oncoming traffic. The driver of that car, 60 year old Deborah Campagna of Haddam, was killed. 62 year old Teresa Shimoda, also of Haddam, has serious injuries. A 61 year old woman is killed in a house in Summers. Officials say Denise Hanna died in the home on Billings Road. Investigators say flames were spotted around midnight and Hannon was trapped in an upstairs bedroom. A teacher shocked by a light switch in Winstead is being treated for severe burns at this hour. Police say Pearson Middle School Academy fifth grade teacher Christy Edzak was turning on her lights in her classroom when she was shocked. Power to that part of the building was shut off. Students were evacuated to the cafeteria and gym as a precaution. Officials say the circuit breaker failed, but the rest of the school was deemed to be safe. She is hospitalized in Bridgeport. A gas line venting today at the site of the explosion in Middletown that killed five people. The 12 inch pipeline exploded on Sunday during a purging at the clean energy plant that was in its final stages of construction again in Middletown. The pipe was shut off immediately after the explosion, but there was still gas trapped in that line and it was considered to be unsafe for investigators on the site. Despite those concerns, there was nothing to see, no noticeable noise or smell. State Fire Marshal's office, uh, there's fire engines on scene with crews, all just precautions just in case. The investigators have extended their search warrant until midnight on Friday. We're told they are expected to be finished collecting evidence at the site by then, but a conclusion at that point, highly unlikely. News Channel 8 was first on the scene of this next story, and tonight we have an update. Police in Hamden are looking at whether motorcycle gangs played a role in the fatal shooting of a tattoo parlor owner. Among the things they're considering, whether his killing could have been a retaliation. Police say 64-year-old Joseph Ferriala was shot and killed in the back parking lot of the tattoo parlor on Dixwell Avenue. That happened Tuesday evening. Police say they're focusing on a certain group as they look for suspects. We are looking into uh, information that Mr. Ferriolo uh, may have um, some affiliation, um, maybe a membership or other involvement with area motorcycle gangs. Hamden Police say Ferriello has been on their radar for years as having possible affiliations with a motorcycle gang. The chief says he had a police record dating back to 1984 for nonviolent crimes. Well, two city workers take an unexpected plunge in a New Britain pond. Happened right at Stanley Park as the two Parks and Rec employees we're cleaning snow off the pond to get ready for a festival next week. Then suddenly, their riding snowblowers fell right through the ice. The two men were able to get out of the water and back to the shore on their own. Heavy duty construction equipment had to be brought in to haul the snowblowers out of the water. The developer planning to resurrect the closed Powder Ridge Ski Resort is now pulling out of the deal, citing high electric and tax rates in this state. The town of Middlefield was willing to sell a portion of this area to Snow Time Development to renovate and reopen it. Just two weeks ago, the state announced it would even kick in more than half a million dollars to help with this thing. The developer tells News Channel 8, factoring in the high electric rates and personal property taxes, the numbers just didn't add up. We've got to shift gears and we've got to realize that it cannot just any longer be just a ski area. It's got to be a ski area and other venues as well to make it uh, worthwhile. Now the town is still planning to hold an already scheduled informational meeting next week on plans for this site. A question of ethics next at 11. Why reports of a secret poll have some lawmakers asking questions of Governor Jody Rell. And it's the big dig out in Maryland and most of the middle Atlantic states. Jeff? Yeah, not here in Connecticut. Last night I showed you our picture from the Middlesex Corporate Center camera in Middletown. We looked down at the streets and they were slushy and that slush was getting hard. Tonight, the streets are dry. That's good news, but there is a little ice to worry about. I'll talk about that in the rest of the eight day forecast. So don't go to sleep yet. There's more News Channel 8 at 11 to come. Coming up on Nightline, see how the multi-billion dollar pornography industry is trying to survive in a world filled with free online content. Plus, behind the scenes of the world's biggest card company as Valentine's Day approaches. Your favorite makes and models are different.
Towns of Washington's and Lincoln's during the President's Celebration Sale at Acura by Executive. Financing as low as 1.9%. Drive the all-new 2010 Acura TSX, $299 a month, or a new 2010 Acura MDX, $499 a month. Get on precedented savings at Acura by Executive's President's Celebration Sale, Route 5, North Haven. It's the President's Sale at Pilgrim Furniture City, where every Simmons and Simmons Beautyrest mattress is half off, now through President's Day. This Simmons Pillow Plush Queen Set is regularly priced at $7.98. This week, it's just $3.99. There's free delivery, free setup, and free removal of your old mattress, plus pay no interest for 12 months with no minimum purchase required. The President's Sale, now through Monday at Pilgrim Furniture City in Milford, Southington, and our newest location at Burr Corners in Manchester. I'm Mike Rowan. I'm spreading the word about Ford at a gas station. How are you? I'm Mike. The Ford Escape. Well, this is nice. It'll parallel park itself. You don't have to 